I was in the woods on this route that I call around the world and it was right when the woods turns into these sand dunes that like go really high and then really far down again um, and I don't know I just felt like I had been running for like an hour and a half maybe and I just felt like I could be running forever and it just felt I don't know really great and I like I felt great I was really happy my friend was running with me and I don't know, those sand dunes are my favorite. I don't know, that doesn't feel like extreme enough, but it was, I don't know, perfectly serene. So I got to the top of this double black diamond, and I was alone, and nobody else was around. And I kind of got to the point where like you really can't turn around at all, and like look down, so it was like over like a sort of like a cliff type deal. And look down, and it's just like, shit like this is like this steep <laughs> and there's huge moguls everywhere uh wow and it's oh it's also really icy <laughs> like cool um and so i was like all right two things three things i can turn around and take my skis off and hike up and go away or i can take my skis off and hike down or i can just try and do it um and so I went with the third option for whatever reason. Well, because I didn't want to be a baby. Um, and so it was like 10 times harder than anything I'd ever skied at that point. But I just did it and like didn't fall. And you know, it took a while and I was like really sore and stuff. It worked out really well. Thank you very much. Just at the bottom looking up. And like nobody else is coming down, you can see people like hesitate at the top and stuff. It's just like I just did that. Like this is amazing. That's pretty cool. It's sitting on my porch, kind of looking out across my property. I, you know, my dream as a child was always to live in an old farmhouse with a lot of land, and I do. So for me, you know, being able to sit on my porch and kind of look out and realize that I live in exactly the kind of place that I've always dreamed of is is a big part of what's happy for me. One of the happiest moments, like I watch interviews happen and I'm always like, oh my god, like I would, how are they answering that? And they do, they say their wedding. We'll all be quick. Our wedding day to each other. No, I can't take that. <laughs> my wedding day, hands down. I'm getting married, that's my wife. Getting married uh, last year, about this time. And I wonder if they really think that or if they're just saying what they're supposed to say. I was really nervous about the wedding. So I'm not a highly social person, and it was going to be what for me was a pretty big social gathering. And I was nervous about, you know, just having to interact with all those people. But then the day came, and it just felt absolutely perfect. And I was, I mean, I, I can't really say why I was happy, except it just it felt like the most certain I've ever been about doing anything. I tend to be a waffling kind of person, but about getting married to. You know, this particular person, I was completely, absolutely, 100 percent certain. We got married on 8808, and uh, we did it outside, and it was raining, and just when the magic words were about to be said, it was so cool. Uh, clouds lifted, rain stopped, and there was a rainbow. It was a Tuesday morning of senior week here at St. Lawrence. Oh, um, it was the right after our first semester here. Yeah, right after our first semester at St. Lawrence. We went to the courthouse and um, got married in front of the Justice, Justice of the Peace. And whoever was working that day was our witness. I, I don't know who has signed our, our marriage license. I, I don't know. Um, then, in our wedding clothes, um, we went hiking at Stone Valley in Colton. If you've not been there, it's a beautiful river. Um, and we hiked out there in our wedding clothes with a tripod and a camera. We set up the tripod and the camera and took our own wedding picture. And aside from being happy to be married, it was actually just it was an awesome time. We had three different bands at the wedding. It was just a very it was just everything I wanted was, was right there. And it was the first, I guess the only time in my life when all my friends and all my family were in the same place. It was very cool. We had a, a dinner when I graduated college and it was a bunch of my roommates and our families. So it was some of the closest friends I've ever had in my life with their families and my family. 
So that was, and it was just a bunch of people laughing and joking. One of my roommates is from Ireland and her dad's an engineer. My brother's an engineer. So having like them have this like huge talk about stuff and like literally you couldn't distract the two of them from what they were talking about. So that was probably the happiest memory. I realized that I'm so, so easily and effortlessly and abundantly happy whenever I'm with like my extended family, my aunts and my uncles and my cousins. But all of my memories just kind of like mismatch together with them. <laughs> this year on my birthday, um, my roommate, Brynn, threw me a surprise party, and I've never been more surprised in my entire life. I walk into my room, and they were kind of like pushing me ahead, but I thought they were just going to ice me. I, I just like assumed, because they've been doing it all day, and I was turning 21. I get in, and I see it on the floor, and I just kind of was like, no! And then someone screamed latex, and then everyone started coming out of all of these rooms, and I cried I was so happy because I just couldn't believe that I knew this many people that this many people cared about my birthday <laughs> the only reason I applied to St. Lawrence was because my mom went here happiest moment in my life was when I got my acceptance letter from St. Lawrence because oh. it's the beginning of a new life and it was a great moment for me in March I heard from St. Lawrence and something in my heart changed when I read the letter. My guidance counselor at, at my high school wanted to go to St. Lawrence when she was that age, and her parents wouldn't let her, and they made her go to college somewhere else, and she always regretted it. <laughs> so I decided, well, I like her, I trust her judgment, she really wanted to go to St. Lawrence, maybe I'll apply there, and so that's how, how that ended up happening. And I had emailed the swim coach here, and I had asked him a really stupid question and said, are your swimsuits brown or black? Because as much as my mom said she loved the scarlet and brown, I wasn't a huge fan of the brown yet. And I wasn't going to join a swim team and wear a brown bathing suit. That just sounded just terrible to me. So I wanted to make sure that the swimsuits were black. And I emailed the coach and he wrote me back and said they're, they're black. And I said, I'm coming. And I remember going home and telling my mom, and she was thrilled because this was her alma mater, and you know it was a very emotional time. So I think that that's probably one of my my most happy moments. Um, I was recruited for, by the football coach to come here, and when I visited, it was like a welcoming experience for me. So I was very interested in coming. I came up here to go to St. Lawrence. I'm from Long Island and I really fell in love with the area, so I found a way to stay here. But that was the first time I think I made a monumental decision in my life that, that was my decision. You know, it, it totally changed the, the direction of my life. I mean, I'm still at St. Lawrence 10 years after uh, coming here for my first year as a student. I think that the, the strength of the alum um, network it may be as strong now, I don't know that, but it certainly has been no matter where you go. Someone knows someone or someone went to St. Lawrence. There's the connection, the network, if you will. That was very important to me. There's something special about the people that, that come to St. Lawrence and are part of this community. Um, and it's not, there's no cookie cutter type. I mean, everybody has their own different connections to St. Lawrence, but the fact that everyone is so proud of being a Laurentian or being part of this community, it's neat. It's like being part of a, a not-so-secret club, um, but it, it, it's definitely the people. We are the humans of St. Lawrence University.
<laughs> so you for life.